Fighters. I am your host, Eric Assault of the Queen of Teens. Please tune in every single Tuesday. This is a whole hour of Santa Barbara Teen Athlete. Woo! And all those people and businesses that support those teen athletes in the house. We have Dominique Hackett. Good morning, Erica. Yeah, Dr. Rich Dugan, Dr. D. <laughs> I, I will throw your big names in there, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, the Honorable Dr. Richard I, Dugan. I appreciate that. Producer yes. of all the shows. Yes. And News just, Press Radio. And just AM twelve ninety. Aged He's, another year. Yes. He's the magic man. He is. A, <laughs> he does it all. Yeah. And uh, here we are, the end of June. We've had the summer solstice and the parade and all of that stuff. Heading for Fourth of July. Your birthday was yesterday. That is correct. <laughs> oh wow! You, you are correct, sir. Uh, Would you Google it? <laughs> no, I put <laughs> audio in my so it comes up in my calendar every uh, year. Aw, what? Buy Doctor D something. Absolutely. That's right. We we owe you lunch. Well, That's it. I appreciate Aww. that. Uh, this is a lot of fun, though. Here we are yeah. in the summer months and. We've had the marine layer on and off, a little heat here and there, yeah. go away. Uh, and um, the only thing that gives me a hope for the future is the fact that we're now on the downside. We're heading towards the cooler weather. Downslide. Downslide, exactly. Oh, yeah. Whereas when it's in uh, April, uh, March and April and May, I'm going, uh, oh, we're heading for the heat. Yeah. But it's not as bad as if you were in Phoenix, 119 yeah. in the shade. Exactly. Oh, what are they doing out there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's that? Who's that one? Andy Gills is Andy. Out. Andy. <laughs> What's up? What's He's up? Back. Uh, the Happy teenage God, new, mutant ninja. You. I like your hair. I haven't seen this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm, like, I'm, like I'm it? liking the curls. Uh, was, is it naturally like, curly? This uh, is, no. This is what a light socket will Canada. do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a Canadian curl. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. 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 That's what I got off the plane. Everyone's going, hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> 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 what's happening? <laughs> I like it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Happy 29th birthday. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, I'll take that. Yeah. I will take that. No, it's uh, and and uh, now we talked last week. You had just gotten back from Canada. Uh-huh. Are you over the jet lag finally? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. And um, what else is is going on? Uh, who else do we have in studio today? Um, what? Well, who's going to come in? Um, we're going to have Janelle Hose in the house, mm-hmm. housing director for EF. Woo! Which I is didn't even know EF is not EF now. Hutton, please. No, no, no I, I didn't even know. At, that's the whole um, educational first. It stands for EF. I didn't even know what EF stood for. I mean, thank God I could read the card. Um, I mean, it had E in it, so it had to be important. <laughs> no, um, they've been around. They've been in town for a long time. She's going to tell us how long because I forgot. I don't, I don't want to misquote. Education but, first? Yes. I mean, oh, that's what the internationalists yeah. do. They, they I'm there. take the people from the world. Who else wouldn't want to learn English, okay, in Santa Barbara? I would. I mean, that would be awesome. <laughs> and um, they, they've, they have a lot of kids that need housing. So I would yeah. like to learn more better English. Yeah, I, serious. <laughs> so, so um, we're going to help them find these kids' great host families, right? Dean? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And we, we might be taking a couple of kids ourselves. There you go. I yeah. mean, we try not more. to take it more. <laughs> we more. like we like kids. It was like empty. <laughs> we got back from Canada, and then we, we had a couple of weeks where kids were visiting, you know, because our my kids and her kids, who are going to say, da- Sh- Sasha just graduated, Sasha right? Sasha graduated from UCLA with oh, wow. fine arts degree. Wow. Um, Ooh, what, what, what are those three mm-hmm. Latin words together? What was that? Uh, some magna cum laude. No, not magna. <laughs> I mean, not magnum. Some uh, uh, some cum laude. Sumi. 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 What's yeah. the top one? <laughs> I think that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Yes. That yeah. high one. Yeah, yeah. three point nine five grade average. Oh, yeah. Yes, nice. that is the high one. Yeah. Magna is five, three point five. Yeah. So you're Sumi three yeah. three nine five. Yeah, yeah. Sumi. Yeah. 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 She was really up there. It's that not a really command. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a designation. Beautiful, beautiful celebration. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. It's impressive. Awesome. Yeah. From a fine institution. And. She has no student debt. Even yeah. better. Even oh better. She, she was smart to go to SBCC for her first two years. SBCC? And, but this was during the time where you had to pay, but still, she worked at the zoo mm-hmm. uh, in their Great. food court. Great. And um, she was also in the first group of students that went to Cuba to do the lithography nice. uh, block printing that oh, is awesome for a whole month. Wow. So she's done. She's done some really extraordinary things. We should get her in the studio sometime. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. 
uh, to not have student debt at the end of uh, at college. the end of college with yeah. UCLA on. I mean, your if degree. you can get somebody else to pay for it, that's even better. But, uh, <laughs> is she back in her old room? No, <laughs> she is bound and determined to stay in Los Angeles, and she is currently uh, interviewing with various companies. She wants to get on like a team to do you know art projects, a group of people figuring out how to do beautiful things. And her mm. main thing is she she wants to have a positive effect on the world, and she's really politically active. Oh, yes, she is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> yep. Not necessarily in agreement with everyone's opinions in the uh, room. <laughs> completely but opposite. But she cares about people. That's all right. Oh, no, nice. she does. She's very good, strong. Good, good. That's Definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Definitely. I, I, mean, I think sometimes, Andy, I think about, I, I see the commercials, the promos on NBC for the, the uh, uh, Warrior, Ninja Warrior. Oh, yeah, I love that show, And I still. think, <laughs> oh, it, do I see him in there? Is he in the promo? <laughs> you know, is he back in there? Did he did he sign what up again? Of, uh, I mean, well, in that a happened again. Strong way, you still. Pro- you still I, yeah, yeah, I feel good. I uh, every every morning, five thirty a.m. for the last three years. I I I, I, say, I keep upkeep, but uh, mm. I don't have enough time to train like like they do. Um, mm. A lot of these so, guys. So you're so that's not you free climbing up the Granada, the sidewall uh, there. I wish, I wish. <laughs> um, no, I'm I'm just way too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Coaching city college, some foundations I'm working with, and then. Every once in a while when I can get here, it's awesome. But uh, I'm actually getting married. Today is what day exactly? The 27th of June. Ooh, so less than a month. Oh, uh, I'm, getting, wow. I'm getting married. So, <laughs> and then I'll be in Tahiti. <laughs> so married, things are happening. Tahiti. Yeah, things are happening. That's cool. Yes, yes, yes. That's Congratulations. Cool. Thank you, thank you. I, thank I you. love the fact that you guys do each other's books. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. awesome. Oh, my God. There's so many times when I just want to yell. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> I got to just I do just the book. I just love to be like on each other, like dinner table. I'm so, how's that? How do you represent that? Do you like get each other? you coach coach or no? Um, the best part is that we're always asking each other what the, what what we each saw differently. Right. Um, but I, actually, it's a really healthy conversation, and uh, yeah. we actually have way two different styles. Right. I'm the calm. I don't really do much yelling. Right. I, I do all my yelling at practice. Right. Um, but in the game, I, I just let them play. And then, right. uh, no offense to girls basketball, right. but it's a little bit more helter skelter. <laughs> right. So um, it actually does involve a lot more in game coaching than a guy's game. Right. So uh, I actually commend her more because it's actually harder to coach girls. Yeah. And that mm. makes her a better coach. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, they're two different species. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I mean, you have to, I believe that, you know, but see, I've always coached boys. Mm-hmm. So the one time, the one, the two seasons that I coached girls, I mean, I had, I created a complete, I had two moms assist me. Mm-hmm. And after the first practice, it, I caused a complete meltdown. <laughs> I did. No, the girls completely, I had three walk off because I, no. I coached it exactly like I coached a boys practice. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, look, this is me. I'm, I'm, I'm so not going to change. And I'm just, all I said after the first line sprint, and I'm like, that was pathetic. And I said, that. Yeah. I didn't name out anything. I said, that. T H A T. And they all left. I know. And they just like all started crying. I'm like, that. I said, you or you. I said, that. And that's such a, like a bold thing. And then I, each one of them whispered in my ear, you can't say that. I said, can't say what? I said, that was pathetic. <laughs> what, what, couldn't I say that or pathetic or what? It wasn't. Let's do it again. And we're going to do it until I like it. It was just like horrible. Yeah. I mean, what are we going to do? And see, boys are so easy. Blenders. Yeah. And that what re-motivates a boy is a blender guard. I Drop mean, and give me 20. Now. I mean, I don't even. I mean, I had boys. And so I'm how so, did you motivate the girls? Yeah. I actually, to be honest, quite honest with you, I just didn't change. They just had to just go along with me. I mean, and understand how I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just, I can't unchange 27 years. I mean, how am I going to unchange? Let me ask you something, Andy. You've, you've coached both boys and girls? I have. Um, more so 90% boys, okay. yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Athletes are athletes. Competition's competition, right? Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't her style work for both the boys and the girls? I can speak to that. Okay. Yes, please. It has to do with creating a safe environment because an athlete, especially in practice, they're putting themselves into a vulnerable place where they're saying, hey, this is where I don't excel and I need your help and I need you to push me so that I can excel. And that that is a very vulnerable place to be. Absolutely. So if you tell me, when I, even when I give my initial effort, that I totally suck, 
why should I bring anything to the table? So it, it has to do with safety. So in my mind, when I'm working with girls, I'm always watching about emotional point. safety because that's that's what's running in a female brain. Am I safe? Am I safe? I, I, but I, but I, with with Erica, yeah, I mean, you've you've had success with both boys and girls teams, mm-hmm. regardless. Right? Yes, they still ended up, you know. Yeah. They were Cinderella's. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? They were. I didn't, okay. we, yeah, didn't, yeah. we didn't win, but, you know, we got there. Nobody even thought we had a chance. Right. That's yeah. awesome. well, but, I said they got to the dance. Right. That's your, all good. your team's got a chance to realize that even though you may have criticized them on something, right. they never lose your unconditional love. And right. you are unconditional on how, how kids play. Mm-hmm. You don't show any favoritism. Never. So that actually creates a very safe environment to that be is, in. That is, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually, uh, I think I got into coaching because of counseling, to be honest. Um, Mm -hmm. it's, you just listen, you ask questions, you, you encourage them, but then give them two, two positives and a negative. And then, uh, I think that actually goes a long way with boys. Mm -hmm. Um, tell them what they're doing well, encourage them to keep doing better. And then, and then say, Hey, this is my, this is, this is what we want to try. And, uh, I think the not yelling thing goes a long way because, uh, I got, cursed out i was i i my my high school basketball experience was okay <laughs> it was it was it was okay but uh i was so competitive within myself that actually that's what kept me going yeah. but um i wanted to do what i the opposite of what i was what i the way that i learned mm-hmm. <laughs> um because i think i think that i i had more potential to play at a higher level so yeah, I, I tell you um, i only had to deal with sports in elementary school through eighth grade And fortunately, I was able to figure out how to schedule the sufficient classes to where I didn't have to do any physical education (laughs) in high school. That's impressive. That's impressive. And then the beauty of college is you get to choose every single class that you want to take. There are no prerequisites that you have to take in terms of – because I just was not – uh, you know, I mean, there are certain games I liked. I like to play. I've always liked to play basketball, uh, but non-competitive. Gotcha. I even had one on my uh, on my home court at uh, the house that I had back in Phoenix. There was a basketball pole there, and I put up a <clears throat> a, uh, a backboard that I painted with the Phoenix Suns uh, nice. logo <laughs> and everything. And and I had the kids over, and of course, I said, "This is not about winning and losing. We're just out here to have some fun here." Just All move. right. So don't don't be yeah. doing some of these uh, fancy moves that you see in the NBA. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because you'll hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Um, but uh, th- that's just kind of where I'm coming from. But I know that, like with with you, Erica, and and even you, uh, Andy, the whole point of some of these uh, some of these teams is the whole the whole point is to compete and and to go head to head over the season and then go to the ch- the postseason and the championships and so forth yeah. uh, to to win a title. Yeah, and as you get older, yeah, the the, the stakes do change a little bit, yeah. and, and you're getting a lot of pressure from a lot of places. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so much character building happens within yeah, a team. 100%. I mean, the, the statistics are, for girls especially, yeah. 98% of the successful women in business, the CEOs and so forth, we're they were girls. on a yeah. team, yeah. a competitive and, team. And the other thing with Erica is these, these girls that you, you uh, coached, mm-hmm. they will, and I, I say this it's a, in a good way, they will remember you, mm-hmm. that you taught them some things that mm-hmm. they would have never learned if you hadn't coached them. Right. And that's the big plus. That is the big plus. Well, one of the best teams I ever coached were, was a team that um, at St. Wayfields. I mean, and they, you know, they had they were ama- probably the best, most talented bunch of girls I've ever coached, and they were on a club team. And when we when they played with me at St. Ele- elementary school level, seventh eighth grade, um, they were also playing club. And I'm like, well, okay, if you're gonna miss practice, then I mean, I'm not gonna start you. That's just how we're gonna go. Yeah. And then at the end of the day. That worked out okay because then the other players got to play and start and they got to those CD players got to raise their game. So by the time we got into the tournament play, um, even though we were 500 by the time we got into tournament, we were last seeded. Mm-hmm. We ended up winning the tournament because then I went in great guns. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, that blew everybody's mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm last seeded and, you know, my girls just never started. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm not starting them. And everybody's, well, what do you mean? I'm not starting? And man, talk about just getting ripped because they were powerhouse families yeah. and i'm like well they're not going to practice they're not starting yeah yeah i'm sorry yeah. that's just how it rolls they you don't go to practice all the way they're through. not going to start and yeah. i got and these are my friends mm. <laughs> you know but look you chose your club team over me 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm here. Yeah. You know, I'm serving. And I'm not really thinking that they're learning more there than here, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> That's before, my attitude. Before we go to break, uh, one thing that, that I think is incredible. Now, we're in the middle of the forester season right now. Yes. And they're doing awesome. Of course. But when they first start out, in the first week to ten days of, of uh, a, reg- a regulation play. Yes. Regular season. They don't have all of their players. They're short by a third to two-thirds right. of their players, right? Right. And yet they still manage to eke out at least a 500 uh, 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 record in in the first four to five to six to seven, eight games. Mm-hmm. Then their folks come in. Well, it's that first eight games mm-hmm. with that small team. Mm-hmm. If they're doing the winning, that's, to me, Huge. some incredible character right. building in mm-hmm. that regard. Just, right. It's just unbelievable. Then, and I remember Martin saying it during one of the games, he says that if the teams that want to beat the Foresters want to do that, they better do it early right. because come mid-June, right. it's all over. Yeah. yeah, but that's what he does in those exactly. early games, and that's what Hugs for Cubs does, and that's what, you know, I mean, that's Bill's yeah. genius. And they're going to Wichita because right. they won last season, right? but that doesn't mean that they don't go into the season right. with the desire to win as many games as oh, they absolutely. can. You have to, because right. again, it goes to what you said just a minute ago mm-hmm. about not coming to practice and so forth. Right. If you're not playing... To the to fullest extent of your abilities, mm-hmm. how do you expect to compete at the at the postseason? Right, why go? It's true. You know? Well, you got to build that chemistry. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about chemistry. <clears throat> Always about chemistry, and uh, for the first time ever, I mean, Kate School, not not historically known for basketball, mm-hmm. but. Uh, my only goal this past season was to teach them to love the game, mm-hmm. so they practice on their own time. Mm-hmm. They practice so much on their own time. We went to the quarterfinals. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. That's outstanding. Why so, am I the only one clapping? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, no. It, it's a lot of fun. And it, uh, they're now they're now excited. They're, they're, they're spreading the word. There and now more people want to try out. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice. That's all it is. It's just, do you love the game enough to want to practice on yeah. your own time? Right. It's true. All right. Want to take a break? Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Let's do that. <laughs> love the commercials. All right, love the new commercial. Let's take a little break. This is Eric Assault of the Queen of Teen. We'll be back with a lot more of these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salder. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. Janelle Ho! Woo! Look at you. Uh, I'm going to pass you a mic. You guys are going to share because there's a lot of love in the room going on right now. How you doing, Janelle? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Erica. <laughs> you look at you. <laughs> Happy <the> girl. <laughs> I know. We like this energy. <laughs> so funny because when I first spoke to her, she, I mean, Dominique is just ripping out my mics right now. Look at her. She doesn't yeah. know what she's doing. Um, when we first talked, it was so cool because like, can you come over now? Absolutely. She was over at my house in 10 minutes. It was so fantastic. So tell us a little bit about... EF Education First. When did you guys first start in Santa Barbara? Well, we started about 37 years ago, and uh, we basically welcome students from all over the world to study English on our campus. Not sure if you know where it is, over on Chapala Street and Mitchell Terrena down the street. Okay. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, there's always a nice gathering around lunch. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> right by the South Coast Deli. They love that restaurant it's, right it's there. It's incredible. Nice. All right, so name some of the countries that you guys host. Oh, my gosh. Right now we have Taiwan, Italy, Belgium, Switzerland, Algeria. We have a student from Tunisia coming in. Huh. Um, we have a lot of French students here right now, as well as a lot of South Americans. Yeah. Mm. So what level of English... Do, it, like, do they not know a word of English? Are they like fifth grade, eighth grade, college? Where are they at? Yeah, so our students can be as young as 13 years old and they could be as old as 81. Uh, there's no limit to how old you can be to learn English. But this summer, I think we're going to average between 13 years old and 23 years old. Hmm. And uh, some, some of them come with a good amount of English, but there are some who have not a lick of English. So our, our job is to open the world through education and, and give them the tools to be able to communicate and and speak English. What are the prerequisites? Like, I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, you could probably find it on the internet, but uh, how do they hear about your program? Yeah, so we have a off-site or overseas admissions offices where they can go learn a little bit more about studying abroad. We're not the only school here. We do have about 44 schools uh, worldwide, about 14 in the U.S., so mm-hmm. it's a good option for them. 
but it's safe to say Santa Barbara is a yeah. favorite. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. That's awesome. Perfect weather all year long. I'm curious uh, about uh, etiquette. Yes. Because I hear from people in different workplaces uh, that there are other folks who speak other languages and they're constantly talking at the workplace specifically uh, in these other languages, which, you know, that's great. I I wish I was bilingual in that respect. But it's frustrating for those who aren't uh, because they wonder what they're saying. And some people who don't have real high self-esteem think, oh, they must be talking about me. For me, it's easy in Spanish. I just listen for my name, and then I know. (laughs) Uh, But what about in the proper context? Uh, Because obviously, this is the United States, and English is the, I don't want to say the only, the language, but it's the predominant language. Yeah. Uh, So do you talk about uh, the places where you really need to be using English and where you should go ahead and, hey, speak in your, your native tongue? Yeah, so actually when they first arrive here, uh, we teach them a, a quick policy. Once you're here at EF, you are going to be speaking English only. Um, that is to encourage them and push them to be out of their element just because you can learn English in your home country. Mm-hmm. But if you're here, you're, you want to be fully immersed. Mm-hmm. We say, you know, it's okay to, if you don't know what the words are, it's completely okay to ask your friends or even kind of figure out, you know, what the proper words are to use, but try your best, you know, okay. try your best. And you never know who else is bilingual. Am I correct that the school is, is along Chapala? Is that right? Or you mentioned yeah, the South. Right. Okay. I've seen these kids. I've, I walk to work down Chapala sometimes and I walk past these kids. They're not always speaking English. <laughs> I know. They, they, they get tired of listening to us. In the, I don't want to out anybody, but sometimes I'm hearing it's not English. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we, we try our best. Once they're out of out of the campus, yeah. you know, they, they are pretty much uh, on their own. Um, and it's true, you know, they are going to be kind of speaking together, but... Mm-hmm. I like the phrase English immersion. Yeah. That, because sometimes I feel bad, like we've had uh, exchange students in our household, and I felt bad saying, hey, I, I really only want you speaking English. And I feel like, well, am I putting English above another language? No. Y- you paid money to be in this country in mm-hmm. order to learn English, so I'm helping you with your English immersion. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. So you set up, so I understand it, because, you know, we know what high schools look like. We know Mm -hmm. what colleges look like. So, and I'm not really familiar because I've never been inside EF. So you walk inside. Is it like different? Is it set up? like a high school so how is it how is yeah. it set up so it is a, a, a language school it has um, offices and classrooms together um, it's definitely feels like a campus you know we have our classrooms our academic department um, but it's also a fully inclusive program where we have our activities department so the students come they come to classes five days a week and uh, afterwards they can kind of see what other options they can do to really maximize their time here do they receive units and stuff? Uh, do you teach anything outside of language? So it's fully language, okay. but they can um, do exam preparation. Gotcha. So if they want to prepare for the Cambridge exam or the TOEFL exam, um, we do have those intensive courses for them to be able to take that exam and bring that certificate back to their home countries. I, uh, as a former high school counselor, I had a lot of students who would want to go abroad mid-year or take a, take a program elsewhere. Um, On the flip side, I'm actually curious, if a student was to come here for EF for a semester, um, would they then be a semester behind in their home country? It depends on where they're at. Uh, A lot of students maybe are taking a gap year. Um, Uh, It's very common for international students to finish high school, take a year off, explore, find what they want to do, and then come back for university. Perfect. What about like a 13-year-old? 13 13-year-old, yeah. So um, we actually have a lot of 13-year-olds right now. Some of them... Do take a little bit of a break, and some go to international high schools afterwards. Right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I wish I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, me too. I'm not, I'm not very well traveled, and that's the one thing that I'm looking to improve on in my life. Um, I feel like I could have learned more. Yeah. Um, I, I really, really know California, and I really know Santa Barbara, but I need to travel more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just never really had the opportunity, so. Definitely. Just out of curiosity, so uh, EF is teaching English in Santa Barbara. Is EF teaching any other language in Santa Barbara? 
You know what? There there are a few more um, EFs, uh, not in Santa Barbara, but if you wanted to learn a different language, we have courses in Madrid, in Barcelona, oh, Costa awesome. Rica, if you want to learn Spanish. There are Japanese schools in Tokyo, Chinese in Beijing, in Singapore, and uh, an Italian. Would all of us in this room qualify for EF? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do your teachers, so are your teachers bilingual? No. So our teachers, a lot of them are able to speak another language, but we don't require for our staff or our teachers to have to know another language since we want to mm-hmm. improve the English of our students. Okay, so mm-hmm. if, a, if a student that is 13 years old doesn't speak one word of English, what are you assuring their parents that they would be able to achieve by the time their one year, say, I mean, what are you promising in six weeks, a semester, one year? What are, you, what, are your, what are your goals? We promise that they will have a huge language improvement, whether it's two weeks or 11 months. Um, they'll come back with more English than they had known before, and a lot of it's through task-based learning. So instead of the classic sitting there studying vocabulary, doing grammar, they're getting out into the community, meeting other people, meeting not just students, but American locals too, and learning how to properly have that conversation together and and think on their own. Um, Another one is independence, of course, going out, being more sensitive to the cultures around and having that open mind. So definitely those things, as well as, I like to say, the value of communication. Not just being able to communicate in English, but to tell someone when you're not feeling comfortable or to tell someone when there's a problem and how to get over kind of those insecurities or or fears to be able to do that. That's a huge jump in your self-esteem when you're able to use your voice, even in another language, to express Mm -hmm. where you're uncomfortable. That's that's Mm -hmm. huge. Definitely. All right, let's let's take a little break, all right? But we've got a lot more. We've got... Janelle Ho in the house with EF, so stay tuned. This is Erica Solda. We've got a lot more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Solda, the queen of teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday. Wow. (laughs) This only gets better. What can I say? I'm curious about yes. something in regards to this. Uh, and, and actually, uh, uh, um, Dominique sort of alluded to it. What kind of changes do you see in these kids over the course of their uh, educational process with you and, and EF? Uh, do, do some kids, they just they don't get it, they are not clicking, it's not working for them, or does it work for everybody and they're just going crazy with their test results and school what 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 kind of results uh, in that respect, as far as the 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 demeanor, if you will, yeah. of the student? It's funny because it's uh you know in the four years I've been here, you you do notice kind of a trend uh, when students first arrive, they're a little scared, a little shaken. Uh, the culture shock just takes over, and then you see them go through this honeymoon phase where they finally embrace the changes and they're no longer afraid. They want to explore, they want to meet the other cultures, they want to immerse themselves, and um and and try everything. And after that, maybe especially for our longer term students, um. They get comfortable and then they start kind of going backwards, you know, missing certain things, missing their parents, missing um, their language, hearing their own, you know, accents. Um, And this is the time where they kind of think, man, should I be at home right now? But they get over that quickly and then kind of soar through the final steps of um, trying to learn as much as they can before they know their time is going back. What's the hardest from you can't really say but maybe in your conversations with them what is maybe the most difficult aspect to for them uh, that you see of learning english Mm, varies a lot you know all the students are very different and could be here for different purposes um i'd say what's very difficult sometimes is trying to get all their thoughts that they're trying to get in their head out into words and um, getting over that frustration at first is very very challenging for them some will be patient and get over it quickly and look for help and others may kind of go backwards and say you know what you know this is just different for me I'm going to do things the way I do and not try so much in being uncomfortable and again it might be variable but what do they like the most about this process of learning English Oh, 
I think at first they they think it's going to be improving their language, but I think it's developing that very open sense of of thought and being able to accept other people as much as possible. Mm-hmm. I was just curious whether when someone is unable to express an idea or or even find the right word, do they ever try drawing you a picture? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they do. They, I have a lot of pictures in my office in my notebook uh, with them trying to just say like pointing arrows and, and saying this is what I want, circling random shapes. <laughs> I've, uh, I've actually been asked to uh, speak into a Google Translate, um, and, and it works. <laughs> speak into this Google Translate, I say it, and then it takes four seconds and then it shoots it back in the in the home language oh wow um and it's actually really accurate because i've tried it and i i've i've tested it with spanish big time because i've always found that spanish has been very very hard to translate it's very literal and it's always comes out wrong so i tried it with my dad and myself and it was it was pretty accurate so and then we ended up spending the next hour on it (laughs) oh wow wow but uh no no i i work at the santa barbara city college at the community college and uh we have a very high international population so um it's pretty awesome because i work with a program for students who place into remedial english um so their first classes are with my program i'm not an instructor i'm the academic counselor but they i'm i'm advising them to take our courses because we have very high success rates so it's pretty awesome from beginning to end um and and the results are definitely there a lot of it's reading and writing so um the the oral part comes with just being on campus um you're surrounded by people that are only speaking english and then the music and the tv and (laughs) you you end up sometimes you pick up the wrong things (laughs) Um, a lot of the stuff that you hear in the songs and stuff but uh English is such a hard language because one word can mean ten different things, right. and it, it's 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 challenging. Yeah, <laughs> I was always really afraid that you know some of the students that I know that actually graduated the international students, and I know that they just graduated. Okay, I won't even elaborate. So I got afraid that okay, they get to City College and they're not going to make it. So what you're saying is they'll be okay. They'll be okay. Um, okay. Their first two semesters, a lot of them have a very very high interest in leaving as quickly as possible but what we like to explain to them is it's better to do it right Right. and spend the time to really really get your English and math strong Right. so when you get to your major courses you you can interpret the text you can write down exactly what you're trying to say Right. so their first whole year might only be English and math fine but it actually helps later because it's better to have I'm I'm so thankful that (laughs) they have English and math to start from the beginning because honestly like I'm being just generous to say this because I mean I'm talking maybe third fourth grade level yeah because they just didn't have the strengths you know I feel I just felt really bad and the the best part about City College if you're looking to enroll as a first time student you're actually required to take an English and math assessment Mm -hmm. and depending on where you assess you can't really hide from that Mm -hmm. Um, so our ESL department is really strong and then also our our lower level English courses through the English department are to get you to transferable level Mm -hmm. best part about it the way that we like to put students minds at ease Mm -hmm. um, any class below transferable level English Mm -hmm. colleges and universities aren't going to see that Mm-hmm. So it's it's you want to put it your full effort in, but say you don't pass the class, mm-hmm. it's not the end of the world. You can re- we get that assessment before they take the assessment? Can you get the copy? Can you take? I I, I physically cannot. That's mm-hmm. that's I can't do that. No, not <laughs> get the assessment. Can you get the the test oh, before? Oh. oh yeah, yeah. There there are sample. There's yeah, uh, the SBC, sample test. If you Google SBCC assessment, oh, you can good. see practice exams. Oh, perfect. Um, but no, I, I cannot physically give you a no, copy. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. no, no. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, yeah. like, if I could show, you know, a junior and say, look, this is the sample test mm-hmm. that you need to pass just to get to City College, so this is where you need to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's no level you need to be at, and, and that's that's the best part about it. It's right. it's where you start is where you start, right. and and we want to we want to support you from wherever your placement is. Right. So. I want to make a quick plug for Santa Barbara City College. Taking some of those remedial classes was where I learned my love of writing because I actually got to slow down and learn how to write a good pervasive, uh, persuasive argument or how to write passive voice versus active voice. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it sticks to me to this day. So I'm ever so grateful to SBCC. Yeah. And uh, I, I was a very good high school student, but when I got to the college level, 
English, I got my butt kicked. <laughs> I thought I was writing at a good level in high school because my teachers told me I was writing at a good level and maybe they were just trying to get rid of me. <laughs> um, but when I got to college, I really, really felt it and I was not at the college level. So I ended up taking the equivalent, the exact same program that I'm working for. I took the equivalent at Berkeley mm -hmm. and I was in 10 units of English. And I had no life. <laughs> and it was the worst semester of my life. But at the end of the semester, I was ready to take my major courses and do well. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I really hated that semester. <laughs> so funny. Hey, let's take another short little break, all right? This is Erica Salda. Stay tuned for a lot more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. Dominique, where else can you find us? Ooh, Instagram, YouTube, mm. Facebook, yes. uh, teensportsradio.com. Yes. And I love just turning the radio dial to 1290 a.m. KZSB. That's nice. Beautiful. Over six years. Millions of hits, over a million dollars in fundraising. I always preface it by saying F-U-N, you know, because we are for profit. As Les Carroll says, Erica, we are definitely for profit, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of fun. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Absolutely. We connect it. Absolutely. connect the love. Yeah. That's yeah. what I say. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, mm -hmm. do you help someone if they're trying to communicate either with you or someone else and you see that they're just they're in their head trying to find the words so that they can then pronounce them and say them do you help them or do you let them uh, struggle through to you know, find the right word yeah i like to give them a chance you know definitely show them that i do believe in them but if I can tell after a certain time that it's just more frustrating and, you know, it's very overwhelming, uh, I'll try she to give them a tissue. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of boxes by my desk. <laughs> mean <laughs> Janelle. <laughs> mean lady. But uh, I do look for someone who can speak their language because sometimes mm -hmm. even hearing, you know, their own language or finally being able to say it um, gives them that relief. But yeah. I try not to do that until they get a chance. You know, Andy made a good comment earlier about how difficult English is, and I did not know this until. I did a little research. There are 65 different tenses in the English language. 65! Oh, my goodness. You know, I didn't even know that. A past, president, <laughs> past, present, and future is basically what I know, so I need to find out what the other 62 are. <laughs> how, how proficient are you in other than English? Are you bilingual, trilingual, yeah, quadrilateral? Well, I don't like to brag oblique. a lot. <laughs> I can speak two different or three different dialects of Chinese. Okay. Whoa. Each very poorly. Uh, I've never been back to China, and I, I was born and raised in San Francisco, so I, I learned it through family and through school. But I never put the practice in to really perfect mm -hmm. it. So I don't like to brag too much, so people don't try to communicate <laughs> to me. But I, I can pick up a few things. Is there any one country that seems to? be sending its children to the United States for that immersive experience, if you will? Oh, there's so many countries that do it, but... There's um, no one dominant one There's no one okay. dominant one. Well, that's good. I mean, that's that's a wonderful thing. I, we should be... I, I am assuming that we're kind of doing the same thing in other countries. We're sending kids or kids are going to other countries yeah. and immersing in those languages. That would be interesting to, to figure out whether it were... Because generally speaking, I don't find, and I may be biased, I don't find Americans all that interested in learning other languages because it's just so comfortable everyone speaks English. Um, but I had a question for you. How did you get involved in, in being involved with exchange students? What brought you to this passion? Yeah, so so funny thing was, uh, so I was born and raised in San Francisco, and uh, I decided to um, come to UCSB for university. Wow. I had the choice between UC Irvine and UCSB, um, which, you know, Irvine would have been a little easier for me. It's a big city, just like San Francisco. Tons of friends were going to be there. But I wanted to be out of my element. I wanted to be out of my comfort zone to be able to see how strong I was and uh, what I was made out of. And, and once I got here, I said, wow, Santa Barbara is great. This is beautiful. So long, mom and dad. I'll see you in four years. <laughs> One week later, I was calling my mom saying, mom, I'm all alone here. There's nothing is what I was used to. <laughs> and I, I think it took a little too long kind of 
being homesick and wanting to be back home uh, when someone finally, or my mom finally kind of kicked me a little bit and said, hey, you have the opportunity of a lifetime. You're in paradise. Yeah. We're always going to be here. San Francisco home will always be here. So what are you going to do while you're uncomfortable? Mm. Yeah. That's so wild. Your, your background, you said UCSB? UCSB, that's right. Mm. Global. Global and international studies. Wild. Mm. That's awesome. Are you, uh, sorry to ask, at EF, are you an instructor? Are you a counselor? Are you an advisor? She's a big cheese. Are you a recruiter? <laughs> a so I'm cheese. actually a housing director. Ah. Um, I got a lot of passion from, you know, helping people be stronger, make the most of their time, and, mm. and kind of being that voice saying, hey, you can do it. No, mm. yeah. that's it. Hey, let's close out. We got one more section, though. So nobody go anywhere. All right. This is Eric Assault of the Queen of Team. We'll be back with a lot more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Eric Assault of the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're going to close out with a little story because, you know, my heart's still, like, racing from, like, when you scared the month. I told you a scary story. I don't uh, usually tell scary I stories. I know, but it wasn't even... Uh, so Ooh. I want you to have it repeated, okay? Yeah. Because it was like... Yeah, it's a, it's a, Ooh. Yeah. Well, it has... Nine o'clock in the morning. It has to do with hunger, and it has to do with relating, and it also happens to be a scary story, too. Uh, so uh, the story that I got to tell Erica is, um, it's an Inuit story, so it comes from the Native Americans that live in Alaska, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of made famous by Dr. Clarissa S.D. Pincole in her book, uh, Women Who Run With Wolves. And the story is called The Skeleton Woman. That's literally what the story's called. Okay, so we, what it was, it wasn't just Erica, okay, like I'm, like I'm a weirdo. Okay, it was, a, it was about five women, okay, and four, I shouldn't say young women, okay, it was this when your daughter graduated, okay? Yes. And it was just young women, it's like between 21 and 24, and then I'll say, that's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have four so, minutes. We have four minutes. I, I, we were discussing about how, uh, you know, you come out in life, especially after graduating, and you've got this hunger. And so I said, well, I know all about this hunger. So there's a story about a fisherman, and he wasn't having any luck catching fish, and he was getting so hungry. So he decided to shift where he was searching for his food, and he went into this cove that he had never been in before. Well, all the other people who lived close by, they knew that this was a haunted cove, and they knew that there was a reason why you don't go fishing in this cove. So he goes into this cove and he throws out his long fishing line and all of a sudden it hooks something. And he's reeling it in and it hooks something so big. In his mind, he's thinking, small whale, you know, just something really delicious that he can bring home, cook up, and everybody in the village is just going to be so proud of him. He is such the hunter and he pulls the line and he pulls the line and all of a sudden it finally gives and... He, Falls back in the back of the boat, and all of a sudden, kerplunk, up comes skeleton woman. And her hands and her, and her face and everything just lands into the boat, just sitting there. And he goes, ah! And he turns around, grabs the oar, and he's doing the oar as fast as he possibly can to get to the side of the, of the shore. But skeleton woman's tangled in the rope. And so she can't get away from him. And he looks back and she's like running on the water. But she's trying to get out from, uh, from the wire. And so it looks like he's running and she's running after him. But really, she's just getting dragged. So he gets up to the shore and he runs to the village. And he looks behind him and there's skeleton woman. All the bones all over the place running after him. And she's just trying to get unhooked and he's just trying to get to save and he doesn't realize the wires tangled around his legs and his arms. Oh, my God. He dashes through the village and he dives into an igloo. And it's all dark. And in the dark, he looks over and he sees this pile of bones. And his heart just kind of melts. And so he starts to separate the bones and just kind of put them in the right places. And then he curls his wire up because he's going to need it tomorrow to go get some food. And after... He sits down, and he, he's very sad because he's very hungry. And he cries just a teeny tiny little tear, and he lays down, and he goes to sleep. Well, skeleton woman, she sees that tear, and she's so thirsty. She goes over, and with her little finger, she her little bony finger, <laughs> she grabs that tear, and mm, that tear is so tasty. And he's sound asleep. So she reaches into his heart and she pulls out his heart into her hands and she starts to beat like a drum. 
She beats his heart like a drum, and she calls her flesh back into being. And her flesh are all over her bones, and it's so exciting. She's got long black hair. She's so happy to be in flesh again, and she curls up beside him and goes to sleep. Well, he wakes up in the morning, and there's this beautiful woman beside him. And he's like, wow, I've met my mate. And they go out of the igloo, and they go off hunting, because she's now friends with all the animals. And they're never hungry again. And in Alaska, when you look off over the frozen tundra and you see a smart, t- tiny little dot out on the horizon, that is Skeleton Woman and her mate. And the, the secret of the story is that we need each other. The beating of our hearts helps us clothe who we are and who our character is. Wow. Well, how'd you become like Skeleton that. Woman? I like that. That's for another story. Another time. No! <laughs> so, you have to wait. No! That's the next episode. That was a good one. Was that a good story? That was a good story. Yay! I like that story. I love that story. Yeah, that was very good. Thank I, you. But you didn't tell me last time. You're not going to tell me this time. No. Santa Barbara. Next time. Email Dominique Hackett. You can find her on the website. Oh, you're going to find out before me. All right. We love you, Dominique. Thank you. Dr. D, we love you. Thank you so much. Janelle, hey, we're going to give you a commercial. How's that? Oh, sounds Woo! good. <laughs> we love you. Hey, we need housing for about 400 students. Santa Barbara, show some love. Be kind. We'll see you next week. God bless. Mother, 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 Mother,